Abul Hassan from Egypt, Cairo. What are your thoughts on studying at Azhar Sharif and its curriculum compared to Medina? Barak Allah Fiq. Assalamu alaikum, Akhil Kareem. Question coming from Cairo, Egypt. What are my thoughts on studying in Azhar University, its curriculum, in comparison to Medina University? As we have explained before, it's not the move, but it's the movement. It's one of the pillars of Hadith Disciple School of Thought. It isn't the move, but it is the movement. It ain't about your school or your background or your resume, but it's about how you move. Somebody goes to Egypt, they study in Azhar, they can speak better, they can recite better, they teach classes, they have fiqh, they have faham, they have ilm. And then someone graduates from Medina with choppy Arabic, someone graduates from Medina with good Arabic but they don't teach classes, or they're caught up in this sheikh and this person and this fitna and talking about this one all day, and he's a deacon, and so on and so forth, and he wastes himself. He wastes his life. He spent seven years, eight years out of your life, he came back to America. What change did you make? What impact did you make in your community, except for fitna? It's not about the move, it's about the what? The movement. So hypothetically speaking, hypothetically speaking, let's say that the curriculum in Medina is better, it's stronger, it's purer, but it doesn't mean that the one who graduated from that curriculum is going to teach the pure way to his people. And someone, hypothetically speaking, graduated from Azhar, in which the curriculum is inferior, hypothetically, we said, only what? Only hypothetically. And it's tainted, this Ash'ari Aqidah, this Bid'ah, so on and so forth, is there in Egypt, and he comes back, and he's upon the way of Ahl Sunnah wa he says, I went to Egypt, I never believed in none of that crazy stuff. I never practiced none of those bid'ah. I had the aqidah of Ahl Sunnah with Allah's attributes with regards to the rest of the deen. I'm, I'm Kitab and Sunnah, but that's why I was educated. And he teaches Bukhari, he teaches this book, he explains this tafsir, he helps his people. Medina doesn't mean anything because it's not about the move. It's only about the what? The movement. Assume what? Formlessness. Don't get stuck in one shape and one form. If you go to Egypt and you benefit and you learn and you teach that, alhamdulillah. If you go to Medina and you benefit and you learn and you teach that, alhamdulillah. The problem lies in which student of knowledge it is. Someone who's gullible, someone who's naive, someone who can easily be tricked and duped, and he goes there and he sucks up everything that his teacher say to him. And he comes back messed up. And the same can happen in Medina. But obviously, the religious, the political, the economic and the social life in Saudi is night and day in Egypt. It's different. It's different. All the Arab countries have their ups and downs. So I know brothers that have studied in Egypt. Let's say brothers in Minnesota, Somali brothers. One brother, perhaps he won't get upset by me mentioning his name. Okay? Well, maybe I won't mention his name. He's a young Somali brother. He went to Egypt. He wasn't even in the college yet. He was still studying to get into the college because it's very strict and rigid conditions for getting into the college. This guy was sharp as a razor blade, mashallah. His Arabic, his Quran, his akhlaq, his aqidah. He was a beautiful brother. And I would take him and prefer him over too many other people that graduated from Medina. So it's not about the person, or it's not about the move, it's about the movement, okay? So therefore, to compare Medina to Azhar, which curriculum is better, which curriculum is stronger, I can't say that. Certain things I say for sure are stronger in Azhar, no question. And there are certain things that I can say that are stronger in Medina, without a question. And then there are other things which are relative, which are comparative, from person to person, subjective. And most importantly, as one of my teachers told me, when I graduated the bachelor's, I was going to the master's program, I said, what section should I go to, Sheikh? Which department should I do? He said, and this is a golden rule that he gave. He says, Talib al-Ilm say, you can teach you high when I can. He said, the student of knowledge will produce wherever he goes. The student of knowledge will produce wherever he goes, meaning the real student of knowledge. If you have your head screwed down tightly on your shoulders, if you're sincere, if you're hardworking, mujtahid, if you're patient and humble, you're going to benefit no matter wherever you go. You go to Egypt, you go to Malaysia, you go to South Africa, you're in New York City, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. You're going to benefit. And a lazy student of knowledge, a wannabe, an imitator, a pretender, uh, an imposter, or someone that really isn't humble, really isn't hardworking, someone that doesn't scrape their knuckles on the ground and work hard, he's going to get minimum benefit even if he's in a gold mine.
even if he's in a gold mine, he's only going to come out with a nugget. He's only going to come out with a little bit of gold. You can be in the lands of the ulama, sitting with the ulama every day. We saw this, brothers, with the ulama, with the mashaf, driving them around, taking them around. Have personal relationship with the mashaf. He doesn't know anything. Yeah, there's no end, no fix. Anyway, somebody who comes only once a night, sits, and he's learned and taking the legacy of that shit. And most importantly, he gives dawah, and he teaches, and he spins from what he has amassed. This is the most important thing, and this is the true, true nature of seeking him. Huh? And not to get caught up in a place. And it's not just Egypt and Medina. The same applies to healing. This is, we want to say the truth, no matter who likes it or not. It's the best place to study in the world. There's no place like this in the whole dunya. This is the only place in which there's a sunnah. This is the only place. What is this speech? What is this speech? How many people you know who went to Yemen and came back? What have they done? What have they produced? What have they given? What have, who have they taught? Who have they trained and cultivated? And their brothers who went to other places that may not have been as prestigious or solid or orthodox as certain places in Yemen. And they did wonders because it isn't about the place or the location. But it's about what you do with that knowledge. Huh? And be far from bigotry and fanaticism. Do not be a bigot for Medina. Medina, 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 Medina. That's it. As a, as a, as a, as a, that's it. It's only about the match, the match, the match, the match, the match. That's it. What is this fanaticism? The Prophet والسلام, what did he say when he heard the companions fighting and arguing? They got into an argument. One man said, Ya al Muhajideen. Oh, the Muhajideen, the Muhajideen. What the virtue of the Muhajideen? What end did the Muhajideen have? The Muhajideen were better than the Ansar. They did both. They left their homes and they did Nusra in Medina. And another man said, Ya al Ansar. He says, The Ansaris, the Ansaris. The Prophet said, What did he say? He said, Adaw al Jahiliya tiwana bayna al He says, This is the call of Jahiliya? And I'm in your presence? Are you serious? You going back to Jahiliya? This group, that group, this place, this location, this people, those people. He says, muntina. He says, get rid of it right now because it stinks. Get rid of it because it stinks. Don't be a fanatic and a bigot for no school, for no country, for no shape. There's benefit wherever you go. There's knowledge, there's virtue in this place, just like there's knowledge and virtue what? In that place. And if you want to get technical, many teachers in the same University of Medina came from us. Huh? They came from Azhar in the 60s and the 70s. They were Azharis. Many of them established the curriculum and did things in Medina. Huh? And it doesn't mean that everyone has to agree on every single point. It doesn't mean that every Muslim has to agree on every single message, every issue. It doesn't mean that. Where does this thinking come from? Where does it come from? It doesn't mean that. Respect what's there. This is your way. I don't say that. I don't choose to go there, but I respect it. Huh? That's, that's the correct way. Long as that's. Inshallah, brother from online. The news was KA from Manchester, UK. I asked Allah to preserve your shaykh. Can you give us some good tips on tips on memorizing many hadith? A hadith. I asked Allah to preserve your shaykh and I accept the good from you. Can you please give some good advice to a new student? of Medina University and joining the faculty of, of Hadith is his goal. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam wa rasulillah. May Allah bless you, dear disciple. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you well for your kind words. We appreciate it a lot. And inshallah, azza wa jal, one day, hopefully sooner than later, we'll have the ability to travel to the United Kingdom Inshallah, Azza wa Jalla, I meet you in person, bi'ithnillah, if that's what Allah wants. Um, with regards to tips on memorizing many hadiths, then my first tip is, it's going to come before sincerity. Alright, obviously that's the foundation of everything. That's the asal of everything, sincerity. However, it's something I want to mention before that. And also, that's something that you're going to get from any place. Not saying that it's not an important thing. And everyone needs to talk about it, but if you, everyone is going to say that. Sincerity, sincerity. Before we even go that far, your question is going to hinder you from memorizing and achieving your goal. The question itself. What is the tip 
on memori or tips on memorizing many hadiths. You shouldn't have in your head or your mind many anything. Get rid of that. There's no such thing as I want to memorize many hadiths. No. I want to memorize and that's it. Kalas, done. Everybody understand this? Finished. Focus, uh huh. Once again, we live where? In America. Rather, but. And that's not even that. No, in Medina. Yeah, in Medina. What? You live in Medina, yeah. They'll find people, not maybe as often as it is in New York City, but there's plenty of times when someone comes down your block blasting Lil Wayne or Eminem or 50 Cent or Tupac and Outlaws. N Nelly in the Prophet City. Yes. I remember the first time when I went to Medina. The first time I was there, 18 years old, we were in an the apartment, they, they start playing Nelly. Blasting. Wallah I swear, I lied to you not. It's getting hot in here, take off all your clothes. we like, what the heck? In the Prophet City, yeah. So, you know, many people, they think, you know, oh, like one question came with Mufti Q&A, how to avoid music in the West. We said how to avoid what? Music, music in the East. In the East. <laughs> it's universal. It's not just America, huh? Wherever you go, unfortunately. Obviously, certain places are what? Worse than others, more intense about. But you'll find it in many, many places. People blasting music in their cars, driving down the street in Medina. And they see you walking down the street with a, a thobe on and a kufi. And they'll drive faster and beep their horn and make fun of you. Thom kaseer, thom kaseer, thom kaseer, thom kaseer. Say, so got a short throw one, short, th short throw one. Motowa. Um, this goes to show you that you have to be grateful for Allah's blessings. It may be certain people practicing Islam in the UK better than in Saudi. It's a reality. You may find brothers and sisters studying harder in Canada than in Medina. And I saw this with my own two eyes. People, let alone one brother, I is not going to mention his name. This brother was hard working, pious, righteous, beautiful character in the in Philadelphia. He got to Medina, downward spiral. Huh? Allah's blessings aren't restricted to a place. The Haramain have their virtue, no question about that. Mecca, Medina, and other places, Sham, different baraka. But individual, that's Hadahua. There is no place or no time or no age or no race or no sex. No way. The only thing that matters in this affair of ours is what? Is hard work. That's it. Wherever you are, huh? This is a, a lesson. And it's also advice for the new students of Medina. It's to work hard wherever you are. On the airplane, you can read and benefit. And in Medina, you can sleep and play and laugh and have girlfriends and eat and go out and go to the Red Sea and jump in the water and scuba dive. This is a reality, huh? This is reality. So therefore, you have to get rid of that. There's no such thing as I want to memorize many hadiths. No. Only thing that you should be worrying about is entering the gates of Jerusalem. That's it. Allah told Musa alayhi salam to tell his people that when you enter the gates, you'll be victorious. And in Allah, put your trust if you're believers, Allah said in Surah Al-Ma'idah. So just memorize. Just study. Don't worry about how much. Because when you worry about how much, you're looking for perfection and you're looking for comparison. Mm -hmm. They memorize these hadiths here. They memorize that there. This speaker has memorized this. Don't compare yourself. Just exert yourself. Work hard. Scrape your knuckles. Put your trust in Allah and exert the energy that Allah has given you. And that's it. And you'll get what Allah has written for you. And I'm sure, be the night ta'ala, if you take your focus off of numbers, you'll get much more than you thought was possible. People that ask, how many hadiths have you memorized? Mufti, how many books have you read? How many times have you read this book? I tell them I don't keep track. There's no number. How many times have you read Fat al -Badi? I would only know that if I was actually what? And what's the point of keeping count unless I want to tell somebody else? Everybody understand this? You have to be careful. And this leads to the second point of advice of ikhlas, sincerity. This scholar said, I read this book 20 times. I read this book. Be careful. Why are you telling people that? Certain things you may have to share. And you may have to tell. Someone is arguing with you or debating with you. Someone's being obstinate. Ibn Hajar said this. Ibn Hajar said that, Ya Akhi, I've read Fatr Bali Kedha Kedha times. What are you talking about? Uskut. Be quiet. That's one thing. That's one thing. So, don't have a comparison in your head. 
and perfection and I want to do this. And don't get that out of your head. Just work hard, be sincere, live your life, be the nice pilot. If you reach the goal or you don't, what's important is that you die on the track. You die in the path. That's what's muhim. Huh? It's all that matters. So that's my advice with regards to memorizing many hadiths. We've spoken about this many, many times before. How you sleep, how you eat, how you deal with people, ways and methods of memorization, writing it, reading it, counting it, using a clicker, walking back and forth in the masjid. We've spoke about this before. Huh? I would say the most important way of, of memorizing and retaining is teaching and spreading knowledge. Paying zakat is the way of the barakah of the wealth. The Prophet tells us that sadaqah is never deficient because of what? Wealth is never deficient because of sadaqah. Wealth is never deficient because of charity. Even though you're taking money out of your account. How does that even make sense? If I give you $50, that's $50, that's out of my account. My stash, my stack. Huh? But the Prophet said, obviously, he spoke on a higher plane. He spoke on a what? A higher plane. Wealth is never depleted by sadaqah. Every time you give money, Allah will give you more, directly or indirectly. And the amount that you have is only $950 now. I had 1000 But now the 950 goes further than the 1000 It's purer, it's cleaner, and other opportunities are opened up for me. And this applies to teaching and spreading the ilm that you have, no matter how little or how small you may think it is. Huh? So every time you do a class or khutbah, it doesn't have to be 50 million people. It could be a class in your house with your parents, your little brother, your little sister. It's doing, it's burning that hadith in your memory. Over and over and over and over and over again. This is one of the best ways of reviewing. As far as advice to new students of Medina University, our school, our university, may Allah continue to bless it and continue to protect it. I would say you have to have direction. You gotta have direction before you get there. And that's because when you get to Medina, it's easy to become lost. It's easy to become caught up in so many different distractions. And this was when I was there, which was about maybe, what, three years ago? And when I speak to my friends there, they say it's changed dramatically since you left, they say. When I was there from the 10 years or the 11 years that I was there, I saw it change dramatically, drastically. So when I was there were many, many distractions the dunya, I want to work, I want to teach English, to feed your family, to take care of your wife, your children, alhamdulillah. No, I want, to, I want to work so I can wear the best clothes and eat the best foods and drive the biggest SUVs and have the nicest, cleanest, fanciest apartment and stack up books that I never ever read or study and the list goes on. That's a problem, the dunya. You get there studying Islam and this is amazing, yani. Allah has the ability to do all things, subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brother said, complaining to me, he said, I came here to study Arabic and I'm teaching English. He was depressed. And the brother was making good money, real good money teaching English. He says, I came here to learn the language of the Arabs and the Arabs want me to teach them the language of the, of the English. You're going backwards. But that money is what? It's serious. Okay, huh? The cream is real. Your wife, complaining. I'm miserable, I'm unhappy, I wanna go back home, I miss my family, I can't go to the hospitals here, I can't find children's shoes, or underwear, or this or that, you'll be shocked. It's a distraction. Or even an Islamic distraction. Every day, every week is a new sheikh, a new, a new person being refuted, a new person warning from this one. And just look at history and how it teaches us, and how blind we are. The same thing has happened 20 times over the last 20 years. One day, he's Sheikh al-Islam, the Mount of Medina. Huh? The people are tested through this Sheikh. And then next week, he's a Shaytan, he's a Dajjal, he's a Kadhab, Kadhab on Ashib. He has no knowledge, he has no books, he was a high school teacher. Over and over again. So you go to Medina, don't get caught up in that nonsense and that foolishness. Do not get caught up with that. That cannot help you. That cannot help your family in the UK. That cannot help the UK. Go to Medina with the purpose of learning ilm shari and benefiting and studying and sucking up as much knowledge and going back and teaching your country and spreading the knowledge in your country and dealing with the ills of your society. It's a distraction. 
or people to get over to go over to Saudi and get distracted with the politics of the Middle East and the problems of the Middle East and the leaders and the leadership of the Middle East. And some brothers they find themselves in serious problems when they start getting in this group and that group and this faction, and next they have serious issues, serious problems. So my advice is to go to Medina with a direction. Your purpose in Medina is nothing more than learning beneficial knowledge. Period. Anything that comes other than that is extra. I worked on this. I learned this. I met these people. I traveled here. I got to sit in the Prophet's Masjid every day, drink Zem Zem. So alhamdulillah. But the main purpose of Medina is to learn, learn, learn. And that's it. And go home. Peace. My teacher, my professor, he told me. He said, you want to stay and do your PhD here? I said, I don't want to leave Medina. He says, you have to leave Medina. He says, this ain't your home. You're not Saudi. That's what he said. Right into my face. He said, no matter how long you stay, you have to go back. Your home is America. Just that simple. You've learned. You've benefited. We've taught you all we can. Leave. Go. Just like that. So that's my advice. Huh? Stay focused. Keep direction. Don't get caught up in this one and that one and this group and this rah, rah, rah. And there are many, many other advices that we have given. And that's the advice I'm going to give right now. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, waliyu tawfiq.